cross tab is a bad data type because there are row headings and column headings. So it's like having two tables mixed with each other, which is called a cross tab. If we get data in cross tab format and that too as multiple pieces, it becomes very difficult to consolidate and combine the data. Ideally, we should have had the data in three columns category, month, and amount. And because these pieces of data are coming from different departments, we should also have one more column here for department. Now, if you get data in this format, earlier we have seen a power query method of doing it. But because this kind of data is very common, Excel has provided a special way to combine this data without having to convert it to good data. Here is how you do it. We have to press a shortcut which used to work in older versions of Excel, which is still available. Alt D, which used to open the data menu, and then separately press P. That opens the old pivot table dialog. Now, when you click next, and that's what we used to do earlier, it used to take data from a regular tabular piece of data. But there is a third option which is very useful, which allows you to pick up data from multiple pieces. This is an exception to what Pivot Table does regularly. Now I'm going to choose Next, and I'm going to skip this step for now. At this stage, Excel is asking you, where is the data? Just show me the data, and I will do all the dirty work of combining it. So what do I do now? I go to each piece of data, click somewhere inside, and press Control A. To select the entire block of data. In some cases it doesn't work, in which case you go to the top left corner and press shift control end. If that also doesn't work, you have to manually adjust a little. Like this, you choose a piece of data and click on add. So I'm going to do the same thing for all the four pieces of data. In this case, I have individual piece in a separate sheet of the same file. But in reality, these could be separate files as well. In short, select all the pieces and click on Add and then click on Finish. Now, miraculously, in few seconds, Excel has combined this data and brought it together. In this case, there are a couple of problems because actually January and Jan should have been the same and there is a spelling mistake here where travel and travel should also have been the same. But don't worry about that because we have a method of doing that in pivot table. You just select spelling variation, right click, choose group. Excel doesn't know what to call that group. So it calls it group one, but we know what is the correct spelling to be given. So you just overtype it. And now we don't want this raw data. So just right click on this column and choose remove column and that's it jan and january got combined similarly travel and travel can also be grouped we should get rid of subtotal so that there is no confusion it still calls it group 1 and then type the correct name now we don't need this particular column so right click on this and say remove row now your consolidation is complete. It's that easy to convert hours of manual work of copy pasting into few seconds. Having done this, you will have a question in mind. We had data coming from four departments. I have combined the data, but in case I want to see which data came from which department, how do I know? And that's why a page field has been added to the filter area. Unfortunately, the names of departments are lost because it's calling it item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4 instead of the name R&D marketing and so on. Why does this happen? Because Excel does not pick up the name of the sheet when you specify the input data. And why is that so? Because potentially you could have four pieces of data in the same sheet. Now, if you want to specifically apply names, click inside the pivot table we just created and again press Alt D. Release the keyboard and then press P. We come back to the dialog or the wizard, but we are in step three now. So just go back one step 
and this is the dialog where we actually added the pieces of data. Now, in order to have the names added, we have to go one step back and choose I will create page fields. What is a page? A piece of data is called a page. So, now when you come back to this dialog, you will see that it has expanded. Right now, we had four pieces of data, so you may be confused into thinking that I need four page fields, but that's not correct. We just need one page field. What does that mean? One set of names. When you click on one, only this text box or drop down rather gets enabled. Now, how do I use it? It's so very carefully click on each range and type the name which you want to specify. If you don't specify a name, it will be called item one, this will be called item two, and so on. Now, here I am just going to put some abbreviations. Now, do not press enter, do not click next. Just go to the next piece. It will become blank and type the name for the next piece. So, I am going to do this for the remaining two pieces as well. Now that we are done with the naming of each piece, we can click finish. But wait, before we go ahead, let me explain the meaning and the need for additional sets of names. Right now, we have one set of names which is called distribution marketing production R&D. Why would I want a second set of names in this context? Maybe I want to classify the departments as internal facing and external facing. In which case, I would have gone to second one and notice the second combo box got activated. Again, I can go to each one of them and type internal or external. Distribution is an external facing department and so is the case with marketing. And production is an internal facing department. So is R&D. So now I am using two sets of names and then I click finish. And notice what happened. We have page one and page two. Page two has not been added, but I will add it manually. And notice what happens. Page one now talks about the actual names of departments and page two now talks about internal and external. For example, if I wanted the same data to be seen as departments internal and external, what would I have done? I would have removed this row and put page two here and I could see the same thing categorized as internal and external. Remember, Excel has created a pivot table even though our data came in a bad format. Our format of input data is a cross tab. Why did this happen? Because someone who tried to capture the data thought that finally I want an output like this. So why not capture input also in the same format? But as you know now, this is always a mistake because combining that data becomes very painful. Now, in future at least, we should demand that data in a good format. Assuming you get data in good format from next time onwards, how are you going to combine it? with the past analysis because the data here was coming in bad format and there is a solution to that as well. A quick way of getting good data after consolidating bad data is to double click on the grand total and instantly you get tabular data which is what we exactly wanted and because we double click on the grand total it is giving you data for the entire four pieces which we consolidated right now. Now that we know this, you can look at your existing reports and think where to incorporate all these possibilities.